Hello, friends and fellow adventurers. Welcome to the MinMax Podcast. We want to thank you for joining us and you do so as we continue Blood Lords. As always, we'd like to invite you to come join our Discord where you can hang out with us and other listeners of the show. And if you'd like to throw a little financial support our way, you can check out our Patreon and a shout out to all of those at our Lich level and above. Rock Jedi, Iggy, Wolf, Blondimus Slump, Thunder Mammoth, The Trevor Project, Toss Chris, Fizzgig, AC Goldner, Eric R. Hope just gonna sneak right past you there. Indie Link, Tawdry Monster, Mercutio, Angel Shadowheart, Siren, and the Necromancer Forever, Doc Holiday, Jason K, Dicky Lopez, Licky Dopez, Ricky Rope Bridge, Alex K, Doma Elaka, Frank L, Just Mike Works, Ross D, Our Goons Long Lost Elbow, Fig Deer, Zach S, Jimmy H, Mr. Turtle, Sleeve, Darren, Caleb W, Corey, Pickle, Mr. Grim, Fire Down, M54 Ewas, Jameson S, Eric R, Plus Two Vorpal Zemin of whacking, I'm not a robot, George F, Leo Hart, Hard Hard Har, Witch Hunter, Jeremy D, Matthew M, and Scott E. Thank you all so much for your support. And now a recap of session 14. We're in the Great Urge Bank, finding all sorts of enemies and traps and haunts and loot. We find a couple corpses with the red cloaks and three-fingered hand symbol. We head down some spiral stairs and come across some guardian spirits inhabiting statues. We beat them pretty easily, then question them. They say recently some cultists came to steal an ingredient for a poisoner. We come across a couple rooms with lockboxes that are all empty. There's a mild combat. We find a big crate which seems to be the source of the tremor paste shipped from a place called Sallows. We find a journal. Within the journal, we find a map that indicates a place in the Court of Ghouls district called the Crooked Coffin, which is a tavern. As interesting as that sounds, it'll have to wait till later as we have much more to explore in the Great Urge Bank. I mean, we got two rooms left in this area. Let's, uh... Let's do it. Hit it up, Grid Rock. Check this one real quick for traps. Yeah, this is the southernmost room on the, the west wall. Yep. Looks good. Yeah, definitely no, looks it. good. With a, with a, with a Ted. <laughs> uh, this one, like the other vault doors, has the skull with the key hole in the middle. Okay. We put the key in. When you put the key in, this reverberation that you haven't had with the other skulls happens, and then this deep red light comes from behind the skull, shining through its teeth and its eye sockets and its nose. And then in a deep, grovelly, disembodied voice says, On what is greatness built? Money! Power. Leave the work to those who know. And the light fades. Wonder how many tries it's going to give us. You take the key out and put it in again. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it does the same the same thing. It lights up, glows blood red, and it says On what is greatness built? The backs of others. Leave the work to those who know. Ah, that was a good Fades. answer though. That was that a, good was a answer. really like good like that. That. a really good answer for a fucking bank. <laughs> God damn, that's deep. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> Is some sort of check we can make to try to figure this out? Yeah, what do we... What do we? Or did we miss uh, a journal somewhere that had... Uh, uh, yeah, I looked through my notes about when we found the corpse in the basement of the fucking uh, Theater of Sin. It had a key on it, and I believe there was some information on it. There was like... Um, uh, password. Password 1234. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> password 1... <laughs> Keep trying different uh, things. All I wrote is we find a corpse and on it some loot. Is this like a common saying around Grey Dirge if I like try, like roll that or is anything like that? No, that wouldn't yield you any or, results. Or something he might have heard. I, I read all those books. Did I see anything related to this? Not not that you saw, no. Accounting check! <laughs> Now I will tell you that even with the light. You know, after the light fades, that does come out from the wall a little bit so that you can open it. Just like you would of the others. Oh, something just might happen if we go into it. Yeah, we gotta leave the work for those who know. So do you open the door? No, not yet. I want to figure this out. Give me just a second. Um, can I disable it with thievery? 
You could try, but I'll save you some time. No. I'm reading through my notes. Give me just a second. I want to see if I can find something. I'm excited to hear what you got. I'm looking for like our meeting with the Kuthites mm. to see if he told me anything. Oh, oh, sure, okay. I can tell you he didn't say anything about this. You said the Builders League built this place, obviously. Mm -hmm. Can I make a check on them or on the tax collectors to see if this is like a saying I would have known in connection with either of them? You can give me a society check for that. And there's nothing on the key itself and just a little metagamey. Was there anything on the corpse that I just didn't write in my notes? There, the, the answer is available to you. Okay. The answer is available to you. Whether it's in your notes or not, it may not put be. put the key in and say, available to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it it, it may or may not be in your notes, but it is in something that you can all see right now. Oh, my fucking God. It's inside me. Is there one of the letters? What else do we yeah, have? Yeah, I looked through the letters. I looked through the... We picked up those tomes. Well, what's the folded piece of paper? What about the gibberish piece of paper I had? Or I don't even know if that was a book or Like whatnot. the occult lore books? Yeah. Uh, no, you didn't take any of those with you because they're oh. useless. Well, no, like the ones that was like I couldn't read. Oh, that's what those were? Yeah, that's what those... They were just useless filler books. Yeah. Oh, okay. Not, and nothing in there that you'd skimmed really referenced anything like this either. Damn. Uh, I look for a company motto. Is there a company motto around here somewhere? <laughs> uh, like, like teamwork is makes the dream work or some damn shit. <laughs> They're written into the walls. No, nothing like that. No. Fuck. It doesn't just say speak friend and enter carved into the archway either. Let me look at loot real quick. Let me look at loot really quick. There it is. I found it. I knew there was something like that. It The key that we found was wrapped in a piece of leathery skin that has a phrase on it in faded green ink. I put the key into the door and turn it. On what is greatness built? Death and secrets. The work is never done. And the door glows briefly with a eerie red light before opening. And as the door opens, it opens into yet another empty vault. However, this low humming energy permeates the vault for a moment. This and a faint outline of green flames appears around a two foot by two foot segment of the floor in the center of the room. This segment of stone slowly sinks a few inches to the floor and slides aside. Sick. We go in and check it out. Or at least I do. Inside that segment of the floor is a small cubic compartment containing a single iron tube with silver skulls on either end. A scroll case. I ask Gerdrug to check it for traps. Uh, I will look it over. Get a 25. It is certainly not trapped. And you know exactly the trick to opening it, too. I open it. Inside, you see a singular roll of paper. And as you open it up, it looks like a contract of some kind. Contract, huh? Yeah. What kind of contract? Give me a society check. I liked my last roll better. I get a thirteen. Thirteen. So some of this stuff is obvious, so I'll give you I'll give you the best stuff. At the top of the contract where it would normally indicate a date, it simply states upon the momentous occasion of the foundation of Grey Dirge Bank. And so far as you can tell, the contract is a legally binding agreement, stipulating the Builders League agrees to grant full rights and ownership to the bank upon the completion of the site to the Tax Collectors Union, and that its authority regarding all matters concerning the bank is second to the Union's authority. Therefore, the Union has all precedence of the bank and ownership of the bank. 
However, there is a final clause in the contract in which parties from both great factions agreed that full authority over the structure and its operation would revert to the Builders League if the Tax Collectors Union fails to continuously operate the bank for a period of a year and a day. So we could go show this to the Bank Builders League and be like, hey, we found this thing. This this place is yours. And we could use that as a bartering chip. A year and a day, like continuously from the beginning or like after a year and a day it is the it becomes the builders leagues after a year and and the and a day of n- no one operating the bank oh okay yeah specifically the tax collectors union if the tax collectors union doesn't run the bank for a year and a day continuously then ownership of it reverts back to the builders league it seems really odd to have that that securely held. <laughs> Anything else in here? Detect magic? Search? No magic. Nothing on the search. Just this document, which seems to have been stored here at the founding of the... the completion of the bank, at least. It must be useful for something. Or not! It could be a red herring. I will tell you, this does sort of, from a meta standpoint, this is kind of the biggest, the first biggest decision that you make in regards to the great factions. Cause right, right, that's what it felt like. Do we that's, turn that's it over it to like the to Builders be. League and gain points with them, or... Or rip it up. Rip Pretend it up. it never and, happened. Yeah, let the tax collectors have it. Yep, exactly. The tax collectors aren't doing anything with it anyways. Fuck those guys, they fired me. Yeah, fuck that. I like already got a point with them. <laughs> yeah, no, they basically abandoned the Great Dirge Bank when the celebrants had basically all of the holdings of the Great Dirge Bank transferred to Mechatar. The Tax Collectors Union was like, fuck. They stopped operating it. The Tax Collectors Union has some buildings nearby that they, you know, operate out of in general. Some, you know, office space. Bank? It's been two years. So, like, as a, as, like, a society around Great Dirge, like, why has no one taken place of the bank to begin with? Mostly because all of the security holdings that were in the bank, all of the the cash reserves, were taken, straight up taken to Mechatar. The celebrants and the uh, tax collectors union fought a legal battle of where some of Geb's, you know, most numerous holdings, you know, physical holdings, uh, items and things of that. So, is it owned by someone right now? I'm just confused why it's never been, like, re, like re, re, renovated. Yeah, they've just not done anything with it. There's no reason that you're aware of. So who technically still owns well, it? Well, that's really... Well, that's... The tax collector's union... I feel like someone should... I mean, someone assumes they own it, right? You would know that the tax collector's union assumes that they still own it. But they okay, don't have the still, securities okay. and backings of Mechatar, the capital of Be- of Geb, to justify staffing the place. So, I mean, even if we, like, destroyed this, like... Do they even fucking care? <laughs> like, well, I mean, I think I think that's I kind of a good example of fuck around and find out. You know, I mean, if you yeah. want to, go ahead, but find out what'll happen. They probably don't care until we take away their toy they're not playing with. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> or let somebody else use the toy that they weren't playing with. <laughs> well, there's one more door, right? Yep. All right, I hang. I I get a really high nine to uh, check it for traps. Uh, there's certainly no traps here. Uh, I pull the lever and like we have on everything else. You certainly don't hear anything coming from the other side of the door. And oh my god, it's oppressive zombies that come spilling out immediately. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and arms and hands and doors, and you can't even control it. The door gets pushed back, and these shambling troop of zombies, the dozens and dozens of them, must have been crammed into this room, spill out into the hallway. And we are going to immediately go into combat as they overtake you. It's a zombie swarm. Oh, my God. Roll for initiative. Yeah. That's what I wanted. Or watch you roll a one. Wait. What? That didn't work. Let me try that again. There we go. Now it's going to work. No, I rolled a two. <laughs> God. I jinxed you by God saying we're going to roll a, t- a one. Yeah. Jesus. Got close enough. Maybe I should take my hero point now? Oh, boy. Oh, On initiative rolls? You gotta remember how Fine. little health he has, but you're not in the 
Oh yeah, yeah. So. yeah, I am. It's big. It is big. Uh, I'm rerolling. You're doing it. Oh, point. I forget that these squares are not really. It's a four by four tile in order right. to get a full square. Yes, yes. I'll take that. The tiles do make that I'll perspective that. a little strange. You did a little better that time, Dan. Yes. Happier with that. <laughs> Still just used your hero point on the very first roll of the night. I That's always absolutely <laughs> did. <laughs> That's always a bad <laughs> sign. Yes, it is. That means I have a... At the top of round one, as the after the Shambler troop spills out and there's just dozens upon dozens of zombies spilling forth from this vault. Like, it didn't even, the door didn't even get open all the way before they were wrenching it open, and it gets forced open, and they spill into the hallway. It covers the entire party in their wake, except for Kix, just to the north of the troop. So, at the top of round one, Arius, you start us off. So is it... Is this more or less just like normal combat? There's just special rules for the enemy or like, are there special yes. rules for the combat? So you can make single strikes, like single attack rolls, right? Yeah. But any single target effect can't reduce it beyond a threshold. Yeah, so there's like special attributes to the monster itself, not to the combat. Yes. Okay, so there's nothing like special. I need to know like things I could do. Out of also norm. correct. Okay, that's what I wanted to make sure is that I'm not. A recall something. knowledge would give you like in, this is your standard information. <laughs> Dude, no, I, what? I don't recall. No, <laughs> no, no. Who Wrong character. Right? Wizard. No. no. <laughs> I'm not um, all right. All right. Okay. So first and second actions, I'm gonna cast magic weapon on myself. Wait, I don't have a striking weapon, right? No, we're too low level for that shit. I don't know. Coral got hers at level like, one. So. Yeah, you guys stumbled upon like a treasure trove there, though. I said a regular plus one is great sword. I was like, I didn't prepare these spells because I'm an idiot, right? Okay, so yeah, I cast magic weapon for my first two actions. All right, and then my third action, I'm going to go ahead and take a swing. Now, how, how does flanking work against an enemy like this? Not a thing? Probably or like, we, we technically doesn't. have it? Okay, it doesn't exist. Okay. Like, I'm sure that I can't speak for all creatures because you know the way this edition is. It, every creature is unique in its own way, but... Felt the need to ask. Okay, so I hit with a 19, it looks like. A 19 does hit. Can a troop be flat-footed? Stop asking him these questions. <laughs> Recall knowledge. Can it be crit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just talking uh, more in general of the the thing, because I just have never used it. <laughs> not terrible done. damage. Uh, so 20 damage on that hit. 20 damage. Nice. Solid hit. Arius just cleaves a line of them right in twain. And now there's a small pile of dead zombies in front of Arius, but more quickly fill its place. Lucan. I don't like how he dealt it 20 damage and it says Shambler Troop is now barely injured. <laughs> I imagine this thing's got like 100 HP. Okay. I don't care if we're low well, level. It's it's troop bullshit. The thing's probably got like thresholds that ever like twenty five HP. It's got like seventy five or hundred right. HP. We we need AOEs. Do you, if you have an AOE, drop an AOE. Not on me. It, just drop on kicks. It's fine. <laughs> uh, action one. Lucan backs the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Action two and three, except I got to move forward because I got to be able to see the thing to target it and everything. Action two and three, I will use act together. And with two actions, Lucan will cast... He's off to the side and nobody can see him. So he's going to do something a little shady. He's going to cast Disrupt Undead. That's... Which is illegal in Gab. Super shady. Super shady. But they can't see me do it. Hmm. All right. The shambles are going to tell on you. Are, are you sure we can't? I mean, if you can, I suppose you just need to be able to see any part of it. How about a 21? A 21? Yes. Well, I'm not going to do anything anyway. No, it's a basic fortitude save, so it does take half. Yeah, that's correct. So that's going to be half of six damage so th three damage half of six so three okay Unless positive okay. does extra damage you can see the section of the troop 
on the south side of the hall, right around where Sundrinker is. In fact, all of the zombies around Sundrinker burst a light in a positive energy and fall to the ground in a burning, searing heap. They have weakness and took additional damage. Excellent. Then with my third action, uh, well, with Sundrinker's single action from Act Together, not my third action, I have to make a choice. Do I want to attack or do I want to move Sundrinker out of this troop? And I think the answer is I'm going to have Sundrinker move out of the troop. And that's my turn. Okay, so you're a big old bitch. So (laughs) you're having Sundrinker and uh, Lucan just retreated back into the vault where you found the secret compartment, correct? Yes. Okay. Vault door's still open. That south side of the troop is looking pretty sparse. All the attention is going to the central people in the troop, which includes Gerdrug. It's your turn. I'm guessing you want a religion check on these guys if we did a knowledge. Looking for recall knowledge? Yeah, religion. Then that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Swing at it. Uh, 19 to hit. The 19 hits. 10 damage. 10. Now it takes that 10 damage. And you have just hit its first threshold. Let me tell you something fun about thresholds and single target damage. I bet you didn't have fun. Not all that damage went through just because of the threshold. Right. Does it shrink then? Is that what you had said? Or does this one not do that? It actually doesn't shrink yet. I was going to say, it started at wow. 16, or it didn't start at 16, so I wasn't sure if it would. Maybe it was, it had already been shrunk. It had a, a special thing called tightly packed, because they were tightly packed in this vault, so they were very specifically tight fighters, I guess, as far as troop rules are concerned. So yes, it, it takes it takes damage. I guess I'll attack it again. Get a 23 Ooh. to hit. 23 Hell hits. yeah. Uh, six damage. Takes all of that. Always feels good to be hitting on those iterative attacks at low level. Yeah. And then I am also going to back up. Then, after Gerdrug moves into the vault that the zombies came out of, that takes us over to the Shambler Troop. The Shambler Troop got all the way out here, and it had so many targets that it encompassed, and now it just has one. It could move. So I'm going to use this action that troops have called Form Up. And I want to read the action to you. The troop chooses one of the squares it currently occupies and redistributes its squares to any configuration in which all squares are contiguous and within 15 feet of the chosen square. I'm going to spend one action to choose a square and then rearrange them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this square right here. And I have 12 squares to work with. And you're going to make an L. And they have to be, yep, and they have to be within 15 feet of this square. So it's going to configure itself where part of the troop is going to be shambling in after Gerdrug into the vault that they just came out of, keep Arius within its reach, and extend to get Kix, who is just north as well. I have four left over. They'll clump at the door. That makes sense? You're on the same page? You're saying I should have moved one farther away. (laughs) Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. (laughs) So that is their first action. With their second action, they're going to do something called Shambling Onslaught. And with that, I need a reflex save from Gerdrug, Arius, and Kix. Sup, boys? Ouch. 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 Eh, not out. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> trying to decide this is a good time to use my hero point. So I rolled really poorly on that. I'll take the failure. Well, it's not a critical thing. Wait, what's the ability called? Something onslaught? Shambling onslaught. Yeah, yeah I want to I see what happens. I'll fail. Failures take 13 points of bludgeoning damage as the zombies begin to bash on you just with sheer force of numbers and pushing you up against this wall. Gerdrug take that 13, Arius take the 13, and Kix take half. You mean pushing me up against this open door? 
So, sorry, I guess that didn't quite work. You just take bludgeoning damage. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I had to say no, it's, I mean, it's fair. You, 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 I am you, in an open you doorway. <laughs> you got me, man. You get hit a bunch, bitch. <laughs> you push me into the door frame. <laughs> Tyler, congratulations. I damaged you, didn't I? For the first time this entire campaign where you haven't damaged me other than me damaging myself. That's pretty good. I believe. That's pretty good. <laughs> Maybe a rat got me, I don't know. What is the effect that's on this shambler? Load one? Yes. And it does not use a third action because it does not have a third action. It's still a zombie troop. Oh, it's still a zombie. Nice. So that takes us over to kicks at the bottom of round one. It's your turn. I will attempt a religion check here. I want to know how to kill a troop. Of a religion of zombies. Troop of zombies. With 15, 15 fails. Alright. Why? Well, Do we really have zero AoE? I mean, I'm I'm a truncated caster, and I'm level two. I have no AoE yet. Yeah, that's probably the more part, yeah. Um I will so I'll just strike it, I guess. Strike it? With a telekinetic oh, projectile. Oh, okay, got it. I was like, why are you hitting it? Oof. That one, that's too bad. That's all I got. I did my you best. You did your best, kicks. And that's all anybody can ask for. All right, well, then after kicks, that takes us up to the top of round two. Arius, it's your turn. Time to make some swings. Swing number one. 25 to hit. 25 hits? hoping that's gonna be a crit i rolled an 18 or 17 uh 12 damage it takes that damage and i didn't mention it last round because i knew what you guys were going to do with it anyways it's taking an additional five damage from the slashing nice and as arius just is with large sweeping blows just cutting these zombies down they reduce in size as you've passed a threshold and I continue to swing multiple times, and I miss terribly over and over again. I roll a five, and then I roll a two. Yeah, that's real bad. Real bad. Real bad. Moving on. All right, well, then, after Arius misses a few times, but that's mostly because you killed everything that was immediately in front of you. <laughs> Lucan, from the safety of the vault, it's your turn. So, it has shrunk into a size that I could no longer see it from this doorway, right? That is correct. They just all kind of shambled out of sight. Well, with action one, Lucan will move up to here. Oh, there it is. Action two and three will do act together, sure. And uh, now that my compatriots can see me, I'm not quite so bold to be brazen with the law. And I will cast Electric Arc at it. Reflex save. All right. Which I'm hoping it's bad at. I guess we'll see. Well, it kind of doesn't matter when you have a 16 on the die. <sighs> 24 to It will take half of this damage, which is seven, so it should take three. All right. It takes it. And then with their single action, um, Sundrick will move up into melee range with it. Okay. But I have no more actions with which to attack. Then that takes us over to Gurdrug. It's your turn. So what exactly are the spaces configurations in now? now? So they've thinned out into streams. One's going over to Gurdrug. There's the main force kind of in the middle that's a, uh, engaging with Arius. And then the stream that's going up to Kix. All right. Well, I will attack. I'll get a 25. 25 hits. Deal at six slashing damage. All right. And that slashing gives an additional five. Uh, we'll swing it a second time. Get a nat 20. Yeah. There it is. Nat 20. Doing well. Doing well in the second attack. 14 damage. All right. So from back in the vault, dealing that critical damage, I'll give you some movement with it, but how would Gurdrug take care of literally the rest of the shambling troop with that critical hit? Yeah. So... Kind of like a, almost like a, like a whirling dervish or whatever. He's like moving forward through the group, just slashing his sword back and forth, just slicing these zombies up as he moves towards 
Arius in the group. And with like the storm of Xing Shings and the splats of entrails and zombie innards hitting the floor, the moaning stops, the shambling has ceased. They are dead. Again. Nice. I, I could get used to this. This is fun. <laughs> That's a quite effective, Gerdrag. You did rather well. Uh, I'd say you too, but uh, I didn't. I didn't see you do anything. No, you didn't, and that's just fine. We're early on, but I'm going to give Swanee a hero point, not because he crit, but because he gave a good description after the kill. Is that all the doors, or do we still have one to do up here? Still, do we still have? I don't remember how much of this is left to be explored. I'm ready to treat wounds on myself if we got some time. Yeah, absolutely. We got all sorts of vaults we could hang out in. Uh, apparently rolled a nat 20. Nice. Healing a bunch. And then I would like to search the corpses to see if there's anything in the troop. Among the troop, you find that there were four zombies that have matching onyx gemstones embedded into their foreheads. Some sort of check I can make to figure out who that, like, who would do that or what that would mean? I detect magic on them. No magic. Like, I get, I get, I get that they're just trying to give us something of value, but I was... (laughs) A, A society check I would take to get more information about that. Uh, 20. It's not uncommon for Gebite nobles to display some wealth on their personal guard. So it's possible that some sort of, you know, some noble stored the zombies, this troop down here, for future use. But when it came time to move the bank, they obviously didn't see fit to take the dozens of zombies with them. I didn't even think about that. That they might have been storing their zombie assets yes. in the bank. <laughs> the zombie combat assets being stored at the basement vault bank. Yes. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Couldn't figure out why they'd be down here, but I guess that I guess that uh, there it is. It's Geb. There you go. <laughs> it makes sense. You'd give your guards, you know, really fancy armor and shit, so they everybody knows that you're. Rich. Yeah, but you wouldn't then store your normal guard in the bank. In, in the bank, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> fair, fair. Well, then maybe that's one of those. You imagine the active troop. How much yeah, they're dead. Yeah. How, how rich, rich am I? How rich am I? <laughs> like, yeah. I keep, I keep Even my storage zombies have gemstones embedded yeah, into my- their foreheads. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. Oh. This is good. Taking notes. I know, I know. I need to start taking notes of like how ridiculously over the top we can be. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Um, so if Ari is taking ten minutes, uh, do you need to heal at all? I don't, I'm good. Yeah. Do you want to heal me then? <laughs> oh, sure. Here's an, uh, another fun society fact uh, based on your role, Gerdrug. Gl- You also know it would be extremely easy instead of trying to extract the gemstones from the forehead because they're they're embedded in there deep and you might accidentally break an onyx gemstone as you're trying to pry it out. You could just cut the head off of this thing and sell them as they're pre-mounted. Like you can sell them as pre-mounted gemstones. You don't have to take the time to try to remove them. Like they would be worth more? Not more, but... In order to remove the gemstones, it's going to take a little finesse. Oh. Well, if it's easy to just t- chop their heads off, that's I'm fine with that. Yeah. If it's not going to reduce the value, why not? Nope, not at all. All right. I heal um, while we're resting, while Aris is healing himself. I heal Gerdrug 10. I'll take it. All four undamaged gems pre-mounted are worth 20 gold on their own, but 100 gold if sold as a matching set. Oh, okay. So does that just go under treasure? Where does that go under? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna drag it over. It does go <laughs> under the treasure. Have we opened all of these now, or we still have the northeast one to do? Right, I think there it's the northeast one? door. Uh, I don't see any traps. <laughs> you certainly don't. I try to open the door. 
Here, let me move up there. For the audience, I got an 11 on my perception check. <laughs> I move up, but hang back, as typical. You create a trap by tripping over something. Getting through here is easy enough, and no traps go off when you do. When you walk into this room, it looks like a, a security checkpoint, much like the one where you saw the mutilated body with the trap nearby it. But this one is, you know, free of all the blood and gore, etc. You just picture a super bored security guard. ID, please. <laughs> Give me a perception check in this room. Oh, I was so close to a nat 20. Uh, 24. Gerdrug, you've... So you've come to realize as you've been exploring this bank that there is a certain level of, uh, you know, misuse... There's a layer of dust. It's been two years, really, since anything's happened at this bank for the most part. There's a feel of abandonment to it as a whole. This room, however, on top of that, didn't see much, if any, use at all prior to the bank even having been closed. There's one door on the opposite end here. Nothing interesting in the room. It was basically just a big empty room. Big empty room with a... A desk, a couple of chairs, empty weapon racks. Okay, another 24 to check that door for traps. This door, you practically expect it because the last security checkpoint is where you found that mutilated body. But not not at this one. You don't see anything. You even look for what you've known to be the lever in the frame of the door. Nothing. Okay, I will open it. You walk into a room where there is a 10 foot by 10 foot slab of unadorned iron. It's embedded into the stone floor and cramped writing covers the north and east walls. This iron slab looks much like the one that you used the key on. You know, you hovered the key over the door and it opened up leading down to this spot. It looks much like that. Uh, there might be a door in the floor here again? Anybody? You got that key kicks? Yeah, you just kind of walk up with it, right? Yeah, you just hold, you kind of just like touch the key or get moved to touch the key onto it. It senses by proximity. That's how you got down here at least. They gave us a key fob. Key card. Beep. Uh, no beep though. Bullshit. You hold the key down to the, to it. Nothing. Knock, knock. Uh, check this room for levers. 20. Let's see if there's any kind of lever or any kind of mechanism to, that I can find to try to open this. The walls are very smooth and unadorned in here. You check all the cracks and possible locations you would that you would put something like that, but nothing. You said there was writing? I was going to say they said that there was writing, though, right? Yeah, the writing catches your attention. It's on the north and the east wall, but covering the entirety of the north wall and wrapping around maybe halfway of the east wall. And you see groupings of words like gold key, bone key, knife, copper coin, rusty flute, rye muffin, brass button. They're just random words, right? And then each entry is crossed off. They've tried all those. I say things that they tried to get, try to open this thing. Kicks, give me a lore check. What kind of lore check you want? Gray dirge. We've got gray dirge in accounting. Go with gray dirge on this. Twenty-five. Kicks, you have a momentary flashback of people of management coming up and asking you just inane questions occasionally. You know, if if you walked into your house and turned left, and what would be the first thing on your floor? They would ask you to just pick objects at random, and then they would make make a note, and then walk away from you. But they would do that to other other bank employees at random too. Fucking weird those I worked for. So like their passwords that they just like randomly created passwords based on everyday items. It's likely that there is a password that is needed to open this door. That's what they understood. So they tried their best to open it up. They never have been able to. I say the thing that we said at the other one. Gerdrug, have you checked this for traps? I mean, I 
search this room pretty thoroughly. All right. I'll come in. And yeah, I say the shit that we said at the other door. I mean, that what was the a hell was it? Elicadabra, Elicazam. That's right. That was a specific phrase. Never mind. Like, that wouldn't be the like same Like a as question this. and answer. Yeah. Is there anything else in our loot? Is there a check I can make of some sort? I'll save you all time. Okay. What is located in the lower vaults is beyond the scope of this adventure. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's literally just there. It's there to indicate that the Builders League builds things into some of the architecture that they do for some of the other greater factions and occasionally puts some things that aren't meant for the people they build it for. So, so I see a group could just sit here trying to figure out how to open this thing. Like somebody apparently might have been. Yeah, if we wanted to, like, uh, you know, go in and dive into something like that as a side quest, that would absolutely be something I'm fine with doing. It'd be fun. Yeah. Um, but you'd come to back build to it, it yourself. Until we find out there's just another shambling goat back <laughs> there. More zombies. Okay. So that's everything down here, then. Well, I guess this is beyond the purview of um, current <laughs> mission. <laughs> but at the very least, it's clear that nobody's been there for well before the bank closed. Uh, what was our current mission again? I don't know, but yes, I, I think this is beyond its purview. No, we're, we're looking for uh, uh, clues about, um, well, we found some clues about the tremor paste. Um, there was a specific thing we were looking for, I think. Um, Didn't we have a banking key, accounting lock? Yeah. Oh, that's right. We had, we had a safety deposit box key. Lockbox. Yeah. But all the lockboxes we came across were already open, right? Basically. Yeah. I have a quote. Some say there might be some lockboxes still down in the vault, says us gathering information in Mechatar. Or no, Great gathering Urch. information in Great Urch. Stuff got moved from the bank to Mechatar, but some say there might still be lockboxes down there. Anyway. Well, somebody left a bunch of zombies down here. Based on what we found, there were no lockboxes down here that right. were unopened. But there true. could still be in Mechatar if some of them got moved to Mechatar. That's true. Some of them got moved to Mechatar. A lot of them got moved to Mechatar. <laughs> oh. So, I guess into our loot, it stays. <laughs> Remember that for our book transition. <laughs> but we talked to Burline, and she spoke with Dead, with somebody. And Kepgeta is the leader of the Three Fingered Hands, which is what these red cloaked people are. They obviously came here before us looking for something. And I think we've determined that what they came here looking for was that bone shard paste or whatever it was. Uh, which is clearly part of their plans, seeming to poison food that's coming into or going out of Great Urge. I can't remember if it's coming in or going out of Great Urge. The first farm, that that's a farm that supplies the quick in Great Urge. Gotcha. So the poisoning food that's coming into Great Urge. But also, wasn't that only supposed to like be like a mild irritant or something like that, as far as we knew? Yes. That, that ingredient, yes. Mildly poisoning them. But we found more than one ingredient, right? You've seen two. And the question is, what do these two ingredients do? What do brain rotten tremor paste do when put together, though? Is it like a, like a whatever it is? Mustard, mustard gas. gas. Yeah, whatever that is. Redacted and uh, redacted or whatever. Oh, there, bro. A little specific. Uh, what have you been making? Sorry, home? that's um, nothing. <laughs> so, as you all are searching around around the vaults, making sure that you've you know gotten everything you've come here for, Arius, when you're in the south end of the hall where the row of vault doors is, Arius did get a natural twenty on his secret perception check. There is a secret door on the south end of the hallway. Which hallway? The main hallway. The long hallway. Oh. Remind me never to play a fucking summoner again. Moving these kind of things, things around, and one of them has dark vision and one of them doesn't. Um, so annoying. Yeah, I, I, I thought about warning you, not about that specifically, but about other things. But I'm like, yeah, let them do it. No, it's fine. It I might, still love it. It might actually be easy to kill you in the long run. Well, obviously. 
it's it's not hard when you're taking the worst of two saves yeah in certain circumstances yeah that being said this door is a sliding door that when opened reveals two vault doors two additional vault doors they are both closed still on the same style of having a skull in the door neck or uh, on the wall next to it one to the west one to the east all right well i guess uh left or right first left it is <laughs> sorry i'm writing notes uh eight no traps on this door yeah absolutely not you're fine i open it so many ske- so many skeletons oh my god who's uh i i gotta honestly ask who's passed through the secret door i think i'd be something like this probably not through it our arius probably has he would have probably followed good drug no, I've been I've been hanging back while Gerdrug investigates. Arius has given zero fucks about traps going off in his face. It's fine. I I mean there are several examples of that so far. Yes, I've set a precedent. <laughs> I will continue it at least for a little while <laughs> until I learn my lesson. I appreciate your consistency, yes. sir. <laughs> I need a basic reflex save from Gerdrug and Arius. See, you know. Foundry is just like, you know what? You're all right. You stuck awesome. with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give sorry. you an 18 for sticking with it. I'm like, thank you. So just like before, you uh, move the key into the hole of the gaping mouth of the skull on the wall. Lever pops out, pull it open. And when you do, it's like this second in time where it's about two inches wide and you can see just from top to bottom of that door bones so many bones and as the door opens then that moment of the stillness passes and it all comes crashing into the hallway Arius drops his sword and just holds his arms up like yes come to me my bones (laughs) they all pass through me I'm a ghost Well, they will deal you some bludgeoning damage. You will succeed, so take half of 24. 12 damage to you. Okay. Now you have a vault that is literally spilling bones into the hallway. This is where they keep the good stuff. I feel like if you wanted to hide something, you hide it inside of a room full of bones. bones. Arius dives in like he's fucking Scrooge McDuck. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Swimming through them. I detect magic into there. <laughs> Fucking Scrooge. McDuck. Amazing. I had to take a hero point. <laughs> I love it. That was great. You just can just start calling me the Bone Daddy. <laughs> the Bone Daddy. <laughs> daddy. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yes, in the Bone Vault, go ahead and give me a perception check. Arias gets a 24 as he's swimming through them. <laughs> Just like heightened senses. You have like bone sense. Bone sense. Oh. Okay, Arius, you dove right into it. Amongst all these just amazing bones, this pile of just like perfect specimens, there's this small chest among it. Uh, Arius tries to pick it up and throw it out of the room. This, this chest is in my way. It shouldn't belong with all these bones. <laughs> Chuck it out the door. The chest, as Arius t- chucks it out. Well, maybe you won't. Here, let me describe the chest real quick. The chest is lined with teeth. Teeth are kind of, I mean, they're technically bones. I, 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 like, I like how he hesitates to say teeth because he doesn't want to say it. I know, right? Teeth, Tyler. Okay. Darius doesn't shock it. I mean, teeth are bones. He'll, he's he's intrigued. <laughs> Get your teeth out of the camera, David. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the clicky. Oh. Look, look, look at them pearly whites. <laughs> it's, don't, don't, don't get me wrong, people. It's not just David's teeth. It's everyone's teeth. <laughs> The chest is about uh, three feet wide. Give it to me in measurements of teeth. 
depth. No, I won't do it. Depth that's maybe a, a foot deep. So it's not a big. It's not a big chest. Uh, I toss it over to Gerdrug. If there's any traps on it, I'm assuming they're gonna go off when I toss it over to Gerdrug. So we'll see. I step away from Gerdrug as he opens it, but I also detect magic. No magic. Okay. Gerdrug. Twenty-five to check it for traps. No traps. I'm assuming it's locked. It is not. Oh, I'll move out so it doesn't get confused with the bones, and I'll open it up. I just moved away from you. Stop it! <laughs> um, so what's in this? As he's following. <laughs> yeah. No, no, don't, get away! Don't, don't you want to see what's inside? <laughs> not until after you do. Just open it towards him. <laughs> inside is a morning star forged in the shape of a spiked human skull. Sick. Dibs. It's cold iron. Ooh, are we going to fight some werewolves, dude? Or fey. Oh, that's fairies. Fey, yeah. Fey werewolves? There's also a small pouch containing 50 silver pieces. Don't want that either. I have gold. That's fucking club money right there. Just toss that. And which one of you has mercantile? <laughs> that's me. Go ahead and make that. Mercantilism. Oh, 11. You know, the chest opening is lined with teeth, but there's this red velvet that lines the interior. You could get 10 gold for this from the right seller, from the right buyer. Nice. Okay. Well, stuff the whole thing in the backpack. Six bulk carried in the party loot? Who's shouldering that, by the way? I think Sundrinker was carrying most of it. Yeah, Sundrinker was carrying most of it, but six bulk. Six bulk. That's how much right, treasure you see where I'm at. And how much I can carry. Oh, two of them's that chain shirt. If it's a plain chain shirt, just drop it. <laughs> oh, you're encumbered at nine. I'd be encumbered at nine. Yeah, that's way more than I can carry. I'm already carrying a set of full plate. Can I say, I would have set the full plate, say, like, back at that. Why you have the full plate? I, I would have set that, like, back at the mansion somewhere. Yeah. So take five bulk off of that. You really have one bulk total. I'm putting this back in the party loot. Yeah, you should. No, Sundrigger wouldn't have any bulk. Sundrigger doesn't hold anything. Like it's rounding up to one because you've got the hand wraps. I got the hand wraps in my blows, but they're not actually on Sundrigger. Oh, that's Lucan's right. carrying those. Lucan wears them. I have to, they but I have to put them on Sundrinker. Right, but I have to put them on Sundrinker in the thing for shape. it to work for for them. So then, yes, Sundrinker can carry the chest. Morning Star is not magical. It's just cold iron. Just cold iron. No need to identify it. Mm, well, it's a simple weapon. So most of us could probably use it. True. And it's one of those things where like, when you're given a cold iron or silver or whatever weapon, it's like, do we want to get rid of this? Probably not. I mean, I can hold, I could probably hold on to it for now unless somebody else wants to use it. Yeah, it's not finesse, so I would not use it unless I absolutely had to. It's not my deity's preferred weapon, so I don't know if I'm ready to use it more than just, like, if we run into something that somebody tells me to use it against. Yeah, some regenerations can only be turned off with cold iron. Yeah. So basically, if somebody tells me to use it, I'll use it. I didn't realize we had a silver scimitar? Mm-hmm. Found that upstairs. We have silver and cold iron. Okay. Mm, together we could have cold silver? Yes. And then we could add returning to iron. it as well. We could get a plus one returning silver cold iron. No. That's not how that works. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> key. We'll put it all in the key. Alchemical bomb was what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you throw the alchemical bomb as it's about to explode, it returns back to you. <laughs> Ooh. And then it explodes yes. in your hand. With silver and cold iron travel. <laughs> So, uh, how much of the bone vault is Arius taking with him? As much as he can fucking carry without being <laughs> encumbered. You could just drop it off at the mansion when you get there. You get a big old pile, right? My, my bedroom at the mansion is going to be like this room. <laughs> I'm just going to fill it with bones. <laughs> like you guys are going to open the door and it's going to be a trap because it's just going to go compiling out. It's twice now Gerdrug has had bones falling on him. Every time I go to bed, I injure myself by opening the door. <laughs> well, Oops. I check this other door for traps and open it, because there's no traps on it. Got a 
Got a nine. Got nine there. Yeah, definitely no traps. No, no traps. Wait, wait, wait. I back up. I back up. That's I back good up. Good thing there's really no traps <laughs> on these things because I, I fail so often. This vault door does not burst with zombies or piles of bones. This room resembles a disheveled combination of office and living space, more than a bank vault. An ornate bed sits in one corner, and dusty shelves and tables line the walls. Scrolls and journals cover most of the surfaces and much of the floor. Glass jars, metal flasks, ink vials, and a collection of belt pouches are mixed with other detritus scattered about. A lot of scraps of paper in here. Gonna take a while to go through all those. Yeah, I'll come in. I'll detect magic. I'll look to see if I see anything important to Arius will look around and get a 25. Damn, you're good at this shit. Dude, I'm rolling so fucking good tonight. <laughs> the night I'm like, yeah, I need to go to bed early, guys. 10 o'clock's my cutoff, or let's go early, and I'm just rolling <laughs> fucking fire. It just rocks all night. Yeah. <laughs> As you're all searching around here, we've got some really good checks. Is everybody everybody's in the room that wants to be in the room? Um, I mean, Sundrick would be in there too for sure. Now, yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm definitely in there. I open the door. I'm looking around. Toss yourself in there somewhere, where you would be looking. In the bone room? I don't. Like... No, not the bone. No, room. no, this little, this little side office. I'd probably be looking at like there any weapons the books in and here? shit. Is the it all just like books and papers? I'm investigating stuff? this lever under the bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I guess I'm just thumbing through stuff. It's mostly boring. As you're all going through the papers in the room here, trying to you know get an idea of what's in the room, click, and a door in the ceiling falls open. This thing drops from the ceiling. Oh god, there was a trap. That's one of these things again? No, this one looks different. It's longer. God, that's fucking cool. So it was right over Gerdrug, where Gerdrug was standing, just a essentially. spine with a skull. <sighs> and it is. It's a, it's a spine with a skull on the top. We're gonna go right into initiative. And now I roll like shit. Okay. God damn it. Uh, oh, yeah. I totally should have healed before we came in here. Oops. Yeah, I didn't either. I didn't think about that. I can't use my hero point on my initiative again. Wow, you guys really sucked. No, well, Kix hasn't rolled yet. Kix rolling this I don't want to. Do... Everybody sucks. And I'm. All right. Um... I'm, I'm, I'm debating reusing, using my hero point. One of my hero points since I have two. Sure, why not? And we'll get worse. I mean, not that it makes a difference. Either I'm after him or I'm after him. Hey. Y'all. It didn't even <laughs> do that great. Guess I'm after him. I rolled a nat one on my, uh, my hero point roll there. At the top of round one, it gets to go first. For its first action, it lashes out... At, as it's like falling down from the ceiling, it's catching Gerdrug pretty unawares, but it's right over top of where Gerdrug is. So the first attack, as it falls, goes against Gerdrug. And it's going to bite at you with the skull. It, like, moves much like a snake, and the ribs, bones are scratching along the floor as it does. It rears up to bite you. Does a 20 hit. Ooh. Yep. Jesus. Take 15 points of piercing damage. Good grief. I'm unconscious. I was like, hey, I'll give you flanking. Nope. Oh, wait, never mind. Oh, wait, you're dead. With its second action, it's going to stride toward Kix and then use its third action to strike at Kix. I don't have a check of opportunity. Seven to hit. Oh, one second. Miss. Got eight AC. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then that is its turn. That takes us over to Kix. It's your turn. With a nine? 
<laughs> uh, we have a nine, nine and eight and eight and a seven. <laughs> Seriously, guys, it went bad. I'd sure like to not be in that corner, so I'm going to move up here. And hey, I would technically move before it, but I'm already kind of before it, so like right before it <laughs> in the order. Root. I cast Soothe on the ghost. Nice. Spooky ghost gets 10 healing. Fantastic. Nice. So how does Gurdra go unconscious, right? Do you just like fall into a pile of ectoplasm on the floor or... Why are we so curious about the ghosts? I guess. Creep me out. I don't know. I don't know. Just, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to like, learn how to visualize these things as they happen. It's new to me, I guess. Admittedly, it is kind of weird to picture a ghost going unconscious. Yes. <laughs> Quote unconscious. But yeah, we'll call it a pile of ectoplasm on the floor. Right. Anyways, we got healing. Although, interestingly with the way that this works in initiative, when you go unconscious, you actually move to the top of the order. Is that right? They just move before the person that killed you, right? Oh, which technically you're already there. Yeah. Why does that matter? I feel like we had this conversation. Yeah, we have through rounds. Anyways, let's not d- rules dig into that because it's not consequential at the end of the day. No, I mean, literally we just had this conversation about moving to right before it. Was I not paying attention? Oh, I remember it. I don't. I might have been looking at something. You're probably looking at probably reading about how to kill us. Yeah, yeah, and its abilities. So now that it's a, he's unconscious, how do I kill him? Yeah. How do I eat ghosts? Then after kicks, brings Gerdrug back up. Arius, it's your turn. Can I go to that table that's directly south to me? Can I like move to that square, or is that? How to occupy a full square. Can't really occupy that square. That's a pretty big desk. Okay. Uh, Arius will take a step five feet down, uh, and then he'll start swinging, I guess. Uh, starts with a 22 to hit. 22 hits. Okay. He rolls minimum damage, five damage. It takes that damage. Third action, he makes another swing and misses with the 10. Aww. The misses. Yeah, ten misses. I was actually going to argue whether or not you had to spend an action to put your hand on it if you were investigating, but the ten makes that null. Then, after Arius, that takes us over to Lucan. It's your turn. All right. Conveniently, it's placed itself in a position where I don't think it can hit Lucan. So, Lucan will look to his left, look to his right, see that everybody's pretty injured except for me. And that he just really fucked up my friend Gerdrug. And um, fuck it. I don't know if they're going to be able to tell what I'm doing. And maybe we're good enough friends now where they're not going to turn me in. But I'm going to disrupt undead on him. All right. Fortitude save. It doesn't. It doesn't make a fortitude save. It does not. It's not undead. It doesn't respond to the positive energy that you try to blast it with. Wow. In any way. Wow. Okay. That's what I get for not trying to understand what it is. I was going to say, I think it was a construct the last time we saw one of these things. Something similar that to that, anyways. That very well may be. So that's my first... Oh, that was act together, I should say. Act together. And uh, Lucan's first two actions. So then I guess it will now be Sundraker's action, and we'll attack it with a bludgeoning... Strike. And we'll get a nat 20. Nice. That is a critical hit. We'll deal it 16 damage. 16. Uh, oh, you did it with an unarmed uh, I mean, attack. I did it with unarmed. I didn't do it with vine. I'll, Damn it. I mean, sorry. I'll take the nat 20. He is a generous guy. It'd be 18 damage. 18 damage. <laughs> All right. 2d4 plus 8 maxed versus 2d8 plus 8. Not maxed. Yeah, that's uh Well that's alright. Technically so, yeah. got more, right? Technically got more. Eighteen bludgeoning damage. Uh luckily Yay. for you it is not immune to critical hits. And it is also weak to bludgeoning damage, so this hit hits hard. And it takes twenty three damage. And bits of its bone crack and a rib breaks off here and there. That hurt. Excellent. Okay. Um, now I have 
a third action to do something with, and seeing as how effective that was, we will simply try that again. And let's see if I can do it right this time. I get a 19 to hit. A 19 hit. So we will deal an additional 9 bludgeoning damage. Plus the 5. That's 14. The Sun Drinker is just wham, wham, slamming into this thing, and it's pieces of bone are flying all over the place. All right. Well, that is my turn. Then after Lucan, it's Gerdruck. I would like to give Sun Drinker my turn. <laughs> 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 Um, because I'm not sure what I will be able to do to this thing, but you know what? Give it the old college try. That Gonna space, to... you'll have to jump, like, uh, make an acrobatics check to get up there. Well, I mean, what I want to do is, like, tumble through. Oh, that'll work. And hope I don't fail. Gotta move around and get up on the bed. Yeah. Okay, so tumble behind. We're going to tumble through. Acrobatics check. 24. Uh, 24? That's against Reflex DC? Yes. Is a success. Okay, so I get behind it, and because I have tumble behind, he is flat-footed. Ah. Which is the whole purpose of this. And strike. Uh, how about a 28? 28 is a critical hit because it's flat-footed. Haha. Tactics. 21 damage. It doesn't have anything that's going to stop all 21 of that damage from going through. And it only had 8 hit points left, so you find that perfect spot after just getting walloped by Sun Drinker over and over again and just sever it right from its spine and its head. Way to go, team. Yeah. That'll teach you to attack me, oh bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Necrophidius. Was that its name, or that's the like the creature type? or That's the name of the creature. Necrophidius. I mean, it's a cool name. I like required that. a crafting check to identify. But Sun Drinker made that not necessary. Kind of moot when it's dead. Yep. I guess we finish uh, searching this room. Well, before we do that, is anyone going to comment on Lucan? Lucan just broke the law. I mean, it might be, it's possible that Arius doesn't really know better about the laws in Geb, but a party member casting a positive energy spell is something on its own, I think, for Arius, anyways. <sighs> I'd have to know what the fuck it was. Yeah, I don't expect Gerdrug to understand, but Arius and Kix might. Kix is all about survival. You want to break the law so I don't die? <laughs> you know, there's this funny thing where I keep forgetting Arius is a fucking cleric. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, oh, shit, I do so know what that is. He definitely knew what just happened. <laughs> I was yeah, going to say, Arius doesn't know what happened, but I'm like, wait. Like, yeah, like, I have arcana and occultism, but my religion um, is really bad if it's divine. Luca look, 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 looks around, it's just like, like deer in the headlights a little bit, just waiting to see. It's like he's standing in front of your car. Waiting to see if you're gonna move first. Arius just kind of glares at him like, "Never do that to me." I certainly wouldn't. Don't even know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. I won't do it to you. Sorry, it just slipped out. It's just when I'm in danger. Sometimes you know, it's just you know, something I knew from before I died. Fix gives you the old thumbs up. The hell is he talking about? Nothing. Good drug. Well struck. Another kidding blow for the rogue. You're doing quite well. Diplomacy check. <laughs> that was just David Deswani. <laughs> <laughs> this will be for the whole thing, I'll, I say. Oh, oh yeah. That's a 27 on my diplomacy check to try and smooth this over. <laughs> That's up to these guys. I don't know. What, what, what does diplomacy go against? It's just... It's will be. I think it's will be. It's just... Inner party stuff, it's up to you if you want to actually hold yeah, to that. Yeah, that to me, I like to, to I, for inner party, it's like, I don't care. Nah, Just, I don't it's up to you to choose how you I'll want to I'll take it against that. my will, DC, and that moves you one step up. 
<laughs> that's, a, that's a success. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, my, my will DC is so bad. You rolled really well on that, too. I trust that you will not cast that on me, but it makes me question who you worship. Oh, God. Mm. He's, Ergothoa. He's, he's going to go crazy. You worship Ergothoa? I do worship Ergothoa. Uh, honestly, Arius is fine with that. You worship Ergothoa, really? Yeah, why not? That's what almost everybody in. I always thought I always thought of her more as a like skeleton undead than a vampire undead, but yeah, but she's all about like excess and gluttony, and I I think that fits in well with with Lucan. Also, not an uncommon religion in Geb at all. In fact, <laughs> the, no, uncommon. that's what the celebrants are. Yeah. The celebrants are all about, exactly. and like pretty much like if you don't worship Ergotho, you're shunned. My my thought for Lucan is Lucan doesn't really care enough to not worship Ergotho, so it's like okay, sure, <laughs> whatever. He goes to church on like every other Wednesday, sometimes for holidays. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, yep. This is what my parents did. <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Arius would just be like, your god lives in my god's territory. It's fine. Ah, thank you very much. Like, and I promise, never never on you, Arius, or anybody. I think never on our friends or allies. Hit me! It doesn't work on you. You're alive. Not inside. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're talking about the game here still, right? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. This is so right. uh, in character, right? <laughs> Spencer? <laughs> 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 Not only are we learning more about our investigation, we're learning more about Geb society and about each other. This is turning into a real team building exercise. Will the treasure be the friends we made along the way? Find out next time as we continue Blood Lords. And until then, may you have many great adventures of your own. It's your turn.